Hi, how are you doing? Today we're doing another series discussion, this time around for Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Carver. It's a spin-off series of the Caraval series, which I read in 2022 and I really enjoyed. I do have to say that I think you can read the series without reading Caraval, like technically the events of this book take place after and it does spoil Caraval slightly but it's not like we are in a very different part of the world so it's not like you necessarily need to read Caraval before reading this I'm just saying that but that being said I will leave my Caraval series discussion in the description and up above so you can uh, go watch that if you're interested in it if you want to be sure if you want to read it or not i do recommend if you want to read both to read that series first just because like i said there are some spoilers in here so there you go and yeah let me just talk to you about this final series that i finished in 2023 starting off with a little series synopsis in the first book, we start things off with Evangeline, who her entire life she's believed in like magic and fairy tales and the power of one true love. And at the start of the novel, things kind of go awry when her first love ends up being engaged to someone else. And right before he is set to marry, she goes to the Church of the Prince of Hearts, we, who we also know as Jax, if you read the Carol series. And she decides to go to the church and pray for his help. And he answers her prayer and they kind of make a deal that he will try and sabotage the wedding, stop it from happening if she gives him three kisses. She very soon finds out that this deal is much more than she bargained for and there is a reason why people warn you away from the fates. Yeah, there's kind of like a lot more to it but I feel like saying more than that we kind of spoil it just based on the synopsis the book itself gives you so that's where I'm gonna leave it. So before we get into my thoughts on these books let me just very quickly rank them. I always love ranking these books and I'm going from my least favorite to my favorite but just know that I enjoyed the series very much so this isn't like a sign of badness or anything <laughs> but my least favorite in the series is Once Upon a Broken Heart which is the first book then in the second place we have A Curse for True Love which is the third book and then on the number one spot we have book number two The Ballad of Never After and yeah to explain that ranking let me just give you some quick individual reviews for each book starting off with book one Once Upon a Broken Heart which I gave four five stars to I really immediately kind of like fell in love with this book because the writing just felt so fantastical and like fairy tale like and I immediately just like ate that up and I feel like that also extends to the world like the world just feels very fantastical and very magical and like fairy tale-esque and I just really enjoyed that. I thought the plot was very interesting I was very quickly engaged by it I really liked it like what was going there were several twists and turns that I did not see coming and had my jaw dropped but I have to say that this first book kind of felt like a setup for what's to come like it is still a very engaging book on its own but like the main reason why I did not give it a five star when I read it is because I felt like oh there was so much more coming after this and this is just like the tip of the iceberg <laughs> a lot of complaint I had is that I thought that eventually you know, main character was very stupid like she just made a lot of dumb decisions and she came up with a lot of theories in her head that just felt like girl you're reaching so far for like no reason and it did not make sense and at the same time there was also just people she twist even though it was right in front of her face that she shouldn't and she just I don't know and she felt very stupid but like besides that if you like take away all of that I do think she was a very interesting character and I really like the fact that she believed so much in like fairy tales and magic but yeah let me get to the second book which is the ballad of never after which I give one of my stars to because I feel like this book is kind of split into two parts like the first half I really didn't like I thought it just wasn't well with it Evangeline is the stupidest she's ever been like so incredibly stupid and it made me want to bash my head in because it just was awful and I just I wasn't enjoying my time reading this first half I was like what the fuck happened like I had such a fun time with book one and then I'm just hating my life <laughs> reading the second book and I very nearly dnf this if it wasn't for Jax I love Jax I already love his characters from the little appearances he made in the Call of All series and I just I wanted to keep reading for him but like for the rest there was not anything in this book in the first half that managed to capture my attention but then something happens around the halfway mark 
and the book's just completely shifts like quality wise it seems like a totally different book like this time it doesn't necessarily shift as in the plot becomes so different from what it once was but just the quality becomes so different and i feel like the second half of this book was just perfection like i loved it so much like just the second half of this book it is like my favorite thing i've read all year because it's so good i feel like evangeline kind of like mellows out a little bit she still makes stupid decisions but it isn't as bad as it was in the first half i feel like the story gets a lot more engaging the and full of like twists and turns i didn't see coming because the first half had some twists and turns that i definitely saw coming and i thought were the most stupid solutions to everything but in the second half it was good i was feeling it and the romance the romance was where it's at for this book because it's very angsty it's very pining and it just oh, i i loved it so after that very captivated second half that definitely ended on a massive cliffhanger i immediately dove into a curse for true love which is the last book and i also gave four to five stars to I, because as a book i thought this was incredible but as a series finale it just let me down a little bit like you know it's it is its function is to be series finale to wrap up the series and i don't think it did that successfully there were several side characters from the first two books that just weren't present in here at all there was one that does get a mention but there was a couple that just completely disappear with no explanations and no reasons and that just seemed so odd to me because it's not like they're an important side characters they are like semi-important like obviously not the most important because otherwise the plot can't function without them but it still felt very odd and jarring that they just weren't mentioned and then the ending, as much as I liked it, I feel like it was very abrupt and very quick. And I feel like we just kind of let it unravel a little bit longer because that would mean we get more answers and a lot more of the threats that are currently uh, like still hanging would have been properly tied up. And that just wasn't something that was done within this book. And I assume that is because Stephanie Garber wants to write more in this world and left those things open to potentially be answered in other books. But... You know, this is still the finale of the series, so I feel like there are some major things that are not answered in here. But if this would be like, for example, a third book in a four book series, maybe, I do think like the story in this was really good. It was really strong. It does contain a thing that I do not like, which I <laughs> will not elaborate further on because that will be very spoilery. But there is just something in this that is a major part of the book that is something I typically don't like but I thought was really well executed in this book and uh, really well done. I think Evangeline actually goes through a lot of growth within this book and I felt very cathartic when she looks back on like her past self from like, the first two books and she's just like, girl, I was so stupid. I was like, yes! And within this book, we also get the POV of two other characters who I won't name because, again, that would be spoilery. But <laughs> I really enjoyed getting these two perspectives. One perspective definitely felt more so that that was added for the focus of the reader knowing things that Evangeline can't know. But, like, we needed to know for things to make sense, but Evangeline can't know because then it would ruin the story, you know? So we need another POV to tell us about these things. And I feel like it could have been used as well to make us understand that character a bit more than it did. And the other was perfect. <laughs> Which would make you guess at what POV that was, if you know me. I Like I said, I think the plot in this one was really good. It was very captivating, very interesting. And I do think when it comes to the main story, I feel like this did a great job at wrapping that up. But like I said, when it came to like all the rest, it did not even make an attempt. That's already all of my individual thoughts, so let's just wrap things up with some overall thoughts on this series. If you could not guess, I love this series. Despite each book in it being a four-star read, it feels like a five-star series for me. Like, I honestly think this is one of my the favorite things I've read all year, even if it came to the individual books being a four star. I can keep gushing about it because it just was so good. Like I said before, something I really enjoyed and this was the world and the setting. I think the Lord is such an interesting part of this world and it's very different from the part of the world we got to see in the Call of All series, but it's so fantastical and whimsical and like fairy tale like where like Il Caraval, the magic kind of seemed a bit more sinister. I also really loved that the Nord had a story curse which basically means that every single time a story gets told within this part of the world or about this part of the world I would rather say it gets twisted and each time you tell it like there's some stories where just like the ending is a bit different every time 
or certain details will always get changed and if you read a book about things it will always change its wording slightly so it's never exactly the same and therefore it's hard to tell what is like fairy tale and what is history in this world which is something i really enjoyed and i caught for some very interesting moments when i the series i really liked a cast of characters i know i read a lot at all about evangeline being stupid but i do generally really like her and i like following her throughout the series but i also really liked a cast of side characters i thought there were some really fun figures in there and really fun characters and that's also a reason why i'm hoping we're returning to this world because there's some of these side characters that i want to spend more time with and jax is the love of my life i love him and i knew that when i read carol ball but i haven't read this i haven't read this and i haven't spent so much time much i haven't spent so much more time with him i just yes he's my new favorite character of all time that's an over exaggeration because i'm just in the love cloud but <laughs> I genuinely love him so much. Like I also said a billion times, I love the romance in the series. The tension, the angst, the slow burn of it all, just, mm, it worked so, so well. And I just, I'm still thinking about it. Like some of my favorite quotes from this series are like romance specific because they just hit so well. Uh, yeah. And overall, it had a very engaging story with a lot of twists and turns I didn't see coming because I also just was so invested in these books. So anytime something happened that caught me off guard, I was like, genuinely, I needed to put the book down for a second. It was like, it felt like an act of betrayal. So yeah, I loved the series so incredibly much, as you can tell. And I had such a blast reading and I'm so glad I read it because I was a bit, I was never really that interested in the series, despite it currently being much more hyped than the Call of All series and I've always been interested in the Call of All series. After finishing that series and knowing that this one was partially about Jax, I knew I needed to read it and I'm so glad I did because the people are right. This series is so much better than Colorball and I really love the Colorball series. Like the first book within that series is a five star for me, which none of these hit. But like, I generally think this series is way better than the Colorball series. So if you enjoyed that, go read this one as well because it's so, so, so good. And yeah, I loved it a whole lot. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this series if you read it. And definitely feel free to go into like spoilery details, but just leave a little worrying at the top of your comments that it's spoilery so that people who have not read the books but are watching this video know not to read your comments i guess i'll see you next time bye